Hello everybody and welcome back to Cooking with Grandma. Today I've got a, it's going to be dinner and dessert. We're going to make, it's, there's, the video that I'm copying for the, uh, the dinner, it doesn't give it a name. So I'm going to, well, it kind of, it just says take one ground beef and potatoes and onions and cook a delicious dinner. But basically what they are is potato meatballs. So we're going to make these. So I have, um, already peeled and started grating my potatoes. You take three potatoes and for the, this is for the meatball part, you take a pound and a half of hamburger and you grate three potatoes. I already started this just because, you know, it's kind of boring to sit in here watching somebody grate a potato, but you know how to do it. It's easy enough. So after you grate your potatoes, um, I've actually got two potatoes here instead of three, but one potato was quite large. And in the video, when the picture of it, it showed it, and it um, they were medium-sized potatoes. They were pretty small, so I just did two. And now we're going to grate an onion. It's a lot better grating an onion because then it doesn't make you cry nearly as much as it does cutting it. And it doesn't take long if you have a good, sharp grater. I did have to buy a new one. My other one was getting kind of old and rusty and it wasn't very it wasn't working very good it's a little tricky grating a onion because it's slippery we're going to do this this is cut after this then we do a, a coating on the bottom and it's more potatoes and some onion uh, sorry more potatoes and some carrots and at first when i watched the video i thought oh geez that's an awfully lot of um potatoes but actually it wasn't because it's just basically like having, instead of having a baked potato with supper, it's mixing in with the hamburger, then you're putting it on the, on the pan. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's like a layer of coating, but it's, it works out, I guess, to the same as having, you know, one or two servings of potatoes for supper. So we're going to make sure we get all of these onions out of there. So to that, we're going to... I believe put this into the hamburger. Oh, I got to do my spices. Now she calls for. Um, okay, so in her video, she puts uh, she grates the potatoes and the onion. We're gonna put those into a big bowl, and she also minced up five cloves of garlic. She had one of those things you squeeze and you mince it. I don't have one of those. I really want to get one, but I just mince it up. So that goes in. And then to her potato mixture, then you put in the hamburger, ground beef. You could probably use ground pork. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, flavor-wise, it'll be a little bit different, right? But it probably is doable. I'm just going to break up. I got a few pieces here that are chunks that didn't quite thaw. But they're good. Okay. And now to this, she added, I will put the, the directions and the ingredients in the description box below like I usually do. But she also said in her video, if you don't want these particular spices, just use whatever you like. Now she adds black pepper, cumin, chili powder, chili peppers, and thyme. I don't have any thyme, and we're not a spicy family, so I'm not going to use the chili powder, chili peppers. But, um... So I'm going to use the salt and the pepper, a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper, and then I'm just going to put in a teaspoon of um, Italian seasoning because that's kind of got a little bit of everything in it. It's got your thyme. It might even have cumin. I'm not sure, but it might have it. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do. So she puts all her spices in the meat. Potatoes, okay. and then again Italian seasoning, and I'll add probably like two teaspoons of it just to just because to get all the other spices that are in there mixed in good. Okay, to this now after you get all that in, you just take your hand and get in there and you mix it and knead it and you keep mixing it until it is thoroughly mixed and it all holds together, holds the shape, because this, you're going to make meatballs out of this. So you want it, everything mixed in, all the potatoes, you don't want to pick it up, you don't want any chunks of potato or onion left on your, in your bowl. You want it all mixed in. It does take a couple of minutes, 
to uh, to get this completely mixed so it's all nice and everything mixed. You don't want any pieces of loose potato or loose onion. You want it all incorporated. Once you get it all nicely mixed up, so when you pick it up, you got no pieces falling off, you got no potato pieces or onion pieces in your bowl, it's all mixed in. You're going to start making your hamburger, uh, meatballs. Now she made them like kind of oblong, they weren't really round. They were, and she did get 15, I don't know if I'll get that many, but whatever I get, I get. So what you do is you make it, this is what hers look like. They weren't meatballs, they were little oblong oval type, type shapes. So we're going to see how many we get. I mean, you need like, depending on how many people you're cooking for, that one a person would be good. So let's see, two, three, I need five, but I mean, you know, there's always extra if somebody wants a two. Or, you know, you want to have it for, um, for a snack for later. I can actually make these a little bit bigger. But I only need to feed five people tonight. So we can, I can make them a little bit bigger. I don't know how she got 15 out of this. Maybe I am making them a little bit too big. Because there's no way I'm going to get 15. I'm going to go ahead and try to. You know, the picture, it's hard to tell. And she's not English. It's um, whatever country she's from. She's speaking in her language, describing how to do it, but with subtitles. So, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit lost in the translation. But it doesn't really say how. It shows you a picture of them. But it doesn't say. Now, this video is from... Enfis Yimic Tarafeli. I hope I'm saying that right. E N F E S Y E M E K T A R I F L E R I. So, thank you for this recipe. I'm trying it, and I will go back to her um, her video when I'm done. I'm going to make these a little bit smaller so I can get more. I'm going. I'll go back and comment about. You know what I think how it turned out for me. Four, five, six, seven. Well, I'm gonna get ten at the most. I unless they make them really, really thin and small. There's no way. And she, I used the same amount of beef that she did. So I can't. I don't think I'm gonna get fifteen. Okay, so I got my meatballs all made. I did get 12 of them. They're a little small, but that's the amount I could get out of this hamburger and potato mixture. I don't know how she got 15. Maybe the picture, maybe it's deceiving and it's really, um, they're really smaller than they look. But anyway, I got 12, so that's okay. Now, I've grated up. It calls for f um, five carrots, but her carrots in the video were all about this size. Now, my, this is half of one. This is half a carrot. I cut it in half. So, and plus, theirs were a bit skinnier. So I did um, two because that's they're, they're large. They're huge. So we've got three potatoes grated and the carrots grated. I'm gonna put that in a bowl. And to that, I'm going to add forty, uh, like about. Let's see. About not quite a third of a cup of about an ounce, not quite of a third of a cup of oil. It says 45 mils, which is like 50 mils is like a quarter of a cup. So just under a quarter of a cup of oil. And then we're going to put two eggs in here. Two eggs. And now she used parsley. I, I'm out of parsley, so I'm just going to not use it. <laughs> it's funny, though, in the video, because she said a pinch of parsley, and it looked like it was about, you know, half a cup. There was a lot of parsley going in there. And then again, your cho your um, seasoning of choice. If you want, like it calls for salt and pepper, and then 
the cumin and the chili powder again. So I'm going to just use, what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to use seasoning salt, because that's got salt and pepper. Let's see, it's got salt, pepper, onion, calcium, uh, dehydrated garlic and onion. Okay, so we're going to put that in there, and I'll put a little bit of the Italian seasoning, because that's where I'm going to get the thyme and all the extra little spices. So I'll put that in. Now, I'm not adding salt because gar seasoning salt, that's your salt right there. So I'll just add the black pepper, so a teaspoon of black pepper. And you mix this all in together. You get a large spoon here. And you just mix this all in so it's all incorporated. All the seasonings are mixed in, the eggs are all mixed in, the oil. Kind of looks a little gross right now, but this end product looks amazing. It really looks good. This is a new recipe. I have not tried this before. I was just scrolling through YouTube videos this morning and looking for something different to make for dinner or supper. I call it supper. Some people call it dinner. And this is what I found. And it's a little time consuming, you know, grating everything and mixing it and doing this and that. But it's not that bad. The ingredients are simple. Carrots, potatoes, garlic, hamburger and some seasoning. It's the stuff everybody has. So, get all this all mixed in nicely, all incorporated, and then you take your baking pan, and I put a little bit of oil in here, and I'm just going to oil the whole, just like a teaspoon, a tablespoon rather, and you just spread it around and make sure it's all covered so nothing sticks when you're serving it and now you want to put your potato and carrot mixture in the bottom of the pan this is like your base this is what's gonna be on the bottom and then you're gonna put your meatballs on top you want to spread it out real thin real even Kind of pack it on there. You don't want to, you know, squish it, but just pack it in there real good. Make sure everything is, you want it flat. You don't want any bumps. Nice and evenly. Okay. And then you put your meatballs on top of this. because she did three rows of five but again maybe I don't know how she managed maybe I didn't make them too big or too thick I don't know but I got 12 but there you put that in there now we put this into a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes Clear this all away, and while that is baking, we're going to get started on our dessert. There's a little bit more to do with that uh, recipe before it's completely done. We have to add a couple things after it cooks for a while, and uh, so while that is cooking for the 45 minutes, I'm going to start. Now this can be dessert or it can be just, you know, a snack for later, basically. It doesn't have to be considered dessert. Um, I'm just going to dry this off a little bit because I'm using flour and I don't want it to be clumpy and stick all over the place. So what I've done is I, I will include the recipe, the, in, the ingredients below, but it's just your basic um, cinnamon dough recipe. It's a yeast dough. It's just, you know, flour and yeast and sugar and flour and butter, whatever's in it, and I, I'll put the recipe in. So I've already done this because it had to rise. It had to sit for an hour and rise. So I started that ahead of time. So you make that. What we're going to do is get it. Okay, I'm going to roll that out. 
So you want to roll this out into an 8 by 18 by 12 inch rectangle. A little more room here. <laughs> a big one. And then you're going to put your topping on it. This dough is very, very soft. It's very easy to roll. Really, really good. And, you know, if it doesn't go into a rectangle, you can just give it a pull and straighten it out. And it'll be a rectangle. Now, what I do is I like to measure to make sure I've got it as big as it. So, that is exactly 18. Okay, by 14, so it's a little big that way. So, we just kind of go like this. Just going to push it in, make it a little bit thicker the long way, or the width way. Because... You don't want it to be too thin. There we go. It was a little over 12, so I'll just push it in a little bit more. Okay, perfect. So now you take um, five tablespoons, of, teaspoons of sugar. Five, sorry, let me just double check this recipe here. Uh, four to five tablespoons of sugar, a fourth of a cup of soft butter, and some cinnamon. And now they also use ground almonds, which it's optional, but I've never done that before. But I'm going to because it's just that it's so different. So you take the, your filling, the sugar, the cinnamon, and the butter, and you spread it all over your dough. You want to leave it about a little bit off the side so it doesn't push out your sides when it's baking. Every All the filling all comes out. You want to leave a little edge. So, bring that down here a bit more. Come over there. There we go. Now I've got whole almonds, and it's funny because in her video, this is by, let me see, Home Cooking Adventure. This is the YouTube video that I'm getting this from. Um, she has got this little chopper thing that I have used on my videos, and I featured it in my. In, on my channel, Grandma Gives It A Go. It's like the most amazing little gadget that I've ever bought. I've seen it done before reviews and it didn't work for the, that reviewer, but mine works like a charm. Maybe different brands work different, but you've all seen my little chopper that you pull the handle on. So I've got my almonds in there. And these are hard. Almonds are hard nuts. I'm giving it, you know, five or six good pulls. You look at it to see if it's, if it's ground up enough. Because hers were pretty, pretty ground. Okay, not quite yet. A few more pulls. I guess if there's chunks a little bit, it won't matter. Because, you know, it will just add to the taste of the white of it. And there'll be chunks of almonds, so that'll be all right, too. Okay, it's, uh... I'm just going to give it a couple more pulls because there is some that are a little bit too big. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Now, how much did she actually use? She put three teaspoons of ground almonds. Okay, so like I put way too many almonds in here. I just threw a handful in. So I'll just save these. I'll put it in the container and save it for another recipe that calls for ground almonds. So we're just going to sprinkle the almost ground. There's still a little chunks, but that's, you know, that's okay. We'll give it a whole new flavor and texture. I'll get more of the ground ones. So that's more on the bottom. This I would have had to do, give it another, quite a few pulls, which is fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't take that long, but just, we'll just get this done. So there we go. That's good. Maybe a little bit more than three table teaspoons because, you know, I like that extra thing. So now when you get done with this, then you're going to roll it up just like you would to make cinnamon buns, cinnamon rolls. It's the first roll you start. You want to pinch it real. You want to go real careful. You want to pinch that first roll down so that holds everything. That's your start. And then just roll as you go roll it up try to do it so it's even so your ends are even okay. and let me 
just give it a pull and a squeeze so it seals. This way, you can see what I'm doing, you just pinch the ends, you give it a pull over, and then you pinch it, and that seals it. And do that all the way down, kind of tuck the ends in, and pinch those shut. And then if you want to just give it a little roll and squeeze as you go, it'll, uh, a little fat on one side, I'm just going to squish it down here and make it even. I don't want it. <laughs> Not sure how that happened because it was all an even triangle when I or rectangle when I started. That's okay. These are easy little kitchen boo boos that you can fix. So now we've got that all nicely tight and rolled. And when you get it all rolled up like this, you're going to start and you're going to cut it. Leave a little bit. You don't want to cut it in half. You're just going to cut it all the way down. With a good sharp knife but you want to leave this part at the top not cut through and I'm going to show you why I'm going to cut it right almost like you're cutting it in half you want it to pull apart come on don't be stubborn on me there we go and you see this is what you have when it's cut you have it you have it cut open and you've got you can see how all the layers of the, the dough and the cinnamon so what you're going to do now is you're going to braid this i know braids you usually use three but for this one we just use the two so you're just going to keep going back and forth just like you would normally braid it's starting to come undone you just pinch it shut again and there you go so that's the braid So after it's all braided, you take it and make it into a circle and just kind of pinch your ends together. It doesn't have to stay all the way. So what this is called is a cinnamon, cinnamon braid bread. You can try saying that one five times fast. And you have it so it's all nice and even. It's a little bit, I mean, First time I've made this as well, so it's you know doesn't it looks pretty much like what hers did. So okay, so we're gonna put this on a parchment sheet covered cookie tray, and we're going to put this in the oven for 20 minutes. I'm gonna move over my move my potato meatballs over. And put this in. And now there's 30 minutes left on the timer for the potatoes, so I'm just going to do it until it's down to 10. And then I'll take it out and show you what it looks like. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes, and my cinnamon braid roll bread is done. Look at how nice that looks. Let me see. I'll turn it this way a little bit, bit better. You can look at how pretty that looks. And it's just basically cinnamon bun, but it's in a roll, in a twist, in a braided twist. You just cut pieces of it. Now that's mine, and this is what it looks like from the recipe that I copied. And hers looks a little darker. Oops, Marshall, hang on. Hers looks a little bit darker color, but basically it looks the same. So that was good. I was pleased with myself. And I will get the... Uh, other thing out of the oven in just a minute and show you what that looks like and do the finishing touches on it. It's got about 10 minutes to go. Um, it might only have a few minutes because my, my meatballs were smaller a little bit than hers so 45 minutes might be a little bit too long. So I'm going to check it right now and see if, it's, if they look good. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Right there, you can see the bottom. It's got the veggies, the carrots, and the potatoes on the bottom, and the meatballs. So now to finish this off, now what the lady did in her video is she used tomato paste that she thinned out with warm, with hot water. Um, tomato paste is kind of bitter, and um, I, don't, I do have a can, but I need to save that for another 
uh, for when I make spaghetti. So um, what I'm going to do is just make a, use a little bit of, you can use just tomato sauce. I don't have any just tomato sauce on hand. Um, and, you know, and being the way times are, you just don't want to run to the store just for that. So I'm just using spaghetti sauce. So you just put a tablespoon or so just to cover each meatball. We'll put it on each one. And then on top of this, we're going to add some grated cheese. And we're going to pop it back in the oven just for a few minutes, just long enough for the cheese to melt. And then we will serve it and show you what it is like. This looks really, really good. It wasn't hard to do. Like I said, a little bit more time consuming with all the grating that you have to do, but it really wasn't that hard. And if you've got like a food processor with the, the um, grating blade on it, then, you know, I did have one and it died on me, but I mean, yeah, that was like, that was perfect. It got it done so much quicker. So now I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of cheese over each one. Just cover each meatball with your grated cheese. And I will write down the recipe as written. And you can follow along my video to show you the changes that I made. I just, you know, kind of switched it up a little bit. And we've got a little much in that and we've got nothing. So we're going to put a little extra. Okay, so I'm going to pop this back in the oven just for a couple minutes. Just to melt the cheese down on there. And then I'll show you what it is, what it looks like. And already there is our supper out of the oven. That's what it looks like. Now that's what mine looks like. And this is what the recipe that I copied looks like. Well, it's pretty much identical. So there we go. That came out really well. So I'm going to scoop out piece of this, a meatball with the veggies underneath, and put it on the plate, and you can see what it looks like all served up. Now the bottom issue got a little bit, I think it probably could have cooked a little bit less, but it's okay. It just seems like it's very soft. That's, you know, it's not mushy, but it looks soft. So, that is what is for dinner tonight with your potato, meat and veggies all in one. And then for dessert, or just with a cup of tea or coffee, is our cinnamon braid bread. And that's what I cut a piece off, and that's what it looks like in half. So I hope you enjoy these recipes. Try them if you like. I will write the, the recipes in the description box below as they are written. But I will also... If in my video you can see how I've changed them around and you know my little twist on it. I didn't make them I didn't make the meatball one exactly to recipe. I changed up the spices a little bit. But that's your choice. You can do that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Try it. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried it, if you think what you think of it. If there's anything you'd like me to make, sweet or savory, let me know. Breakfast, lunch, supper, desserts. I will get that recipe and get it on there for you. Stay safe, everybody, and take care, and talk to you next week. Bye.